Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for the 5th of November, 2021. Um, good to see you all here. Sorry, getting set up still this morning and kind of nasally today, have a cold. It's all good. Good to see everybody here. Awesome. Yeah, good to see everybody here. Fantastic. So as always on our 50 Questions Friday, um, if you are here live, you're welcome to chat with everybody here on the chat side. And then if you have questions, please do drop them over here on the questions tab. And otherwise we have this recorded for everybody afterwards. Um, <clears throat> so I don't have any questions on email this morning. I'm pretty sure. I better double check. And so if anybody has questions this morning, otherwise we'll start talking about some of the new tools and some of the new energies that just came in. Um, hey, Ethan, Maine, Netherlands, Cali. Um, yeah, the, the new wisdom ring. Um, so <clears throat> I guess first we'll start talking about the, um, the new updated version of the wings of talk called on the wings of talk. Um, it's a heavier gauge. Shoot, I was going to bring another one. Um, it's a heavier gauge ring on the outer and the steel tines are heavier. And again, that's steel, it's electroplated. It is, um, you know, the, the description really doesn't do it justice. The description on the website, um, uh, kind of lacking on my descriptions here this week. Um, but it is, it's pretty flipping amazing. Um, it is where before the wings of talk was a tool that, um, basically held space for talk and the other master beings to come in. If you and your soul invite them in to do the work, this particular tool, it's like, um, Heimdall are, our guardians of our tools and talk it's like they co-created this this tool together and um, so it does everything that the wings of talk does but it's it's more in the newer energies that we're working with the, with the alchemist set and the divine I am all that that goes in deep deep into that soul level and does that kind of clearing so like when Brenda first held on to this Brenda noticed that um, it acted like a vacuum. It was just sucking up stuff that she was holding that was not hers, you know, and that was quite the epiphany for, for her. She's like, well, holy crap. I didn't realize I was, I was holding stuff that wasn't mine. And, um, so that's been kind of an epiphany in the work that you do for, for your own clearing is because, um, you know, you just kind of assume that, you let go of stuff that's not yours, but this will definitely tell you if you do or not. Um, so anyway, it, it goes in deep, deep clearing. Um, so one of the really phenomenal things about this new tool is the new wisdom rings that are being put in there. Um, we just did our radionics convention here last weekend and, um, uh, Oh, sorry. Going back here to um, Ethan asked, does it do the same for a space like home or workspace? Yes. So the wings of talk is going to expand into the space just like the, the prior one, the on the, wing, on the wings of talk does. Um, so it's going to do everything that the old tool does, that the old wings of talk does, uh, as far as holding space and expanding into that larger space. Um, and then the webinar is still applicable to the, the new wings of talk. Um, so the, um, that the video is still applicable, but there's just so much more that's going on that, um, we do need to sit down and, and write some more on this tool. Um, let's see. And then does the, does it contain the golden fire and STU in the new one? No, actually it doesn't. The old wings of talk 
It had a regeneration ring on the outside. It had a golden fire and the standard CO2 a con unit in it. We're using the same measurements, but we've kind of are, well, kind of, we have expanded beyond the limits of the measurements to bring in to hold the frequencies and properties. So this does not contain any specific energetics like the rings. It's a space. It's it's a connector. It's a you know it's a it's a portal. It's it's a space holder, and in this space is where you find those energies. Now you can still find the energies of the golden fire and the balance and harmony, and the chalice and the divine I am the harmonizer. All of those energies that we create can still be found in here, but it's not like it's individual components that are holding a different space. It is the tool in its whole and complete that is holding the space. Um, quite a new concept in, in the creation of the tools. Um, but anyway, so yeah, there's, there's no specific frequencies that you find in here because of the measurements. We still use sacred measurements, of course. We still use the STU, the golden fire, and the regeneration ring measures but they are not dictating what energies come through. Um, pretty, pretty phenomenal creation. Um, to step into the new ring, um, let's see, we, we teach a, a, I'm a part of a, a teacher group that teaches a master radionics class in here in South Dakota. It's an international class. I think this is our ninth year and um, I just go in and teach how the rings work with radionic machines. And radionics are simply a, um, well, it's a machine with dials on it that you can dial in and broadcast um, energy. It's, it's a quantum energy. It's actually, the older ones used to use crystals for their dials. The newer ones is like an AM transmitter. But it, it sends out, um, you know, intentions and, and quantum fields. And so... With the radionics, um, there's been three years where we have made a ring specifically for taking to that radionic show. Um, last year, it was the Everything Ring. So I know a lot of you are familiar with the Everything Ring, and that one was um, birth for the radionics um, initially. So um, Let's see. And then Ethan was asking, as Brenda felt the ons of the wings to talk, act as a vacuum on her, then it'll act as a vacuum for the home or workspace. Um, yes. Because it is, it's bringing it into the field and it is releasing it, transforming it, harmonizing it. Um, what, however you see that, say that in the highest and best good, it is basically clearing it. Um, whatever is in the space and within you um, and so um, another question about the the on the wings of talk for the pyramids this will be the new um, when you purchase a ascension pyramid this of course is going to be the new one that goes with it we actually have the old wings of talk are on clearance sale right now while they last we're not going to make any more of those like they're like 188 on clearance, um, you know, and they're still a fantastic, fantastic tool. But um, for the pyramids, yes, we are going to be replacing all of um, our pyramids that we have with these. And we're also going to, any new pyramid that's purchased, you'll receive the, the new wings of top with it too. Um, and yes, it is ramping up that energy. I mean, it's, it's shifting it quite a bit. Now there, there is an also an option there. Um, now, if you already have a pyramid and you have the old wings of talk, you can get by with just getting one of the new. You don't have to get the new wings of talk. You could actually just get by with getting the new ring that we're getting ready to release here next week. The the wisdom ring, because when you add that wisdom ring to your old wings of talk it's basically going to be bringing in that same energetics, um, you know, especially with your intention because, you know, 
Talk and Heimdall are here to serve. And so when you bring in the wisdom ring with the old wings of talk and just simply ask that it brings through all that energetics, it will bring that through for you. Um, can we wear this and use it in the space just as well? You know, yeah, there's actually quite a few people that I know right now that have been wearing these, um, you know, because we've been playing with these for, gosh, about a week and a half now, maybe two weeks. And there's a lot of people that are wearing these as a pendant. Again, it's a little bit of a heavier gauge one. Um, we may have in the works a Wings of Talk pendant, but, you know. That's something that we can't guarantee will ever be released if we can even create one or when it will be released or what it's going to look like. But we do want to make a pendant. Um, but like I say, no clue um, on when, where, or how that's going to happen. Um, so yes, you can totally keep this on the person. I've actually been, I've been carrying two of them, one in each pocket, and I've been using them to create that third field. Uh, that's just the way that I've been working with these, and it's been it's been pretty amazing. Um, and I know a couple people that have two of these. That that's what they do is they they work with them in tandem. Um, you know, you certainly don't need to because, gosh, I had a master feng shui friend came through yesterday, and she's like, no, you only need one. It's powerful. Um, so anyway, let's see. Will the new wisdom rings wear well with Untak the keys? Any thoughts on combining them? You know, I I have not played around with it enough. We we will have dependent sized ring as well as the small wrist ring as well as the large wrist ring. Kind of like what we what we did with the chalice rings is we created um, two different sizes of these. One of them, uh, you know, for the smaller wrist which is actually the, um, uh, let's see, it's the 222. So we have a 222 bracelet, and it talks about measuring your size for the harmony in the 222. These are the same size as those for those bracelets. Um, so for, you know, just to generalize, most female hands in the United States fit the 222 on them, this particular smaller version. I wish I could fit that one on my wrist, but I can't. So I use the larger version. Um, and then again, we'll have this smaller pendant ring and this smaller pendant ring may be the one that you want to try with the, um, with the Untak, the key. And, um, like I say, I have not really had the opportunity to play with these with other tools, but I feel it's going to, um, you know, I feel it's going to do some great fun things. Uh, will there be a practitioner sized wisdom ring? In that, I do not know. Um, I really don't know where these energies are going right now. Um, we've been waiting. Well, Brenda's been waiting for me for oh, a few months now because there's been this new energy that has been wanting to come in, but I have not been ready to bring it through. Um, and Brenda's been watching it. And I think that with a few more tweaks, this might be that new energy that we have been waiting for. Um, and I'll get into a little bit on more what, what these are doing. It's, um, it's pretty mind-blowing. Uh, let's see. Let's jump over here to the chat side. So let's see. And a question over here. Um, in working with clients, can this move deep, stuck, or unconscious energy in a palpable way? An energy knot that needs to be released for a person to move forward. I think about the concept of pulling a bad tooth. Now, ironically, I just had a tooth pulled yesterday, which is kind of also why I'm stuffed up. Um, yeah, the wings of talk. The wings of talk goes deep. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of it that is an allowing, just like with all the newer tools that that the person has to allow it that if you're working with a client and they are just holding on to it whether they consciously know it or not that's when you know when i work with people that's half of what i have to do well more than half is talk them into allowing um, 
Otherwise, we, and I, gosh, I'm guilty of it. I did it for nine months straight. Hold on to things that we don't consciously realize that we're holding on to. And, um, you know, because when we work with a human, you know, as a client, we are body, the innate consciousness of the body is always on board for what's in the highest and best. And soul, soul is always the one who determines what's the highest and best. And then we have the mind. So we have body, soul, mind. And it's usually the mind that we have to work with the most on doing the release work. But if a person is ready and allows that release work, you know, and allows the soul, yeah, the wings of talk is going to come in and it will unravel everything and clear it. Um, you know, because you've heard me talk about the whole concept of like using the shaman's wand, how I used it on a hiatal hernia, the stomach that flips. And when I would use it there that first time, it disappeared. It was like it was no longer in creation. And then I also talk about how, you know, the old way of doing the consciousness work with um, intention, visualization, imagination, and being in the heart. Like Brenda, when I would text her, she would move her rib back into place if I had a rib out of place. The new way of doing these things is simply holding the space and allowing and you go to look and it's like it was never in existence. It just, it clears realities um, on creating creation. So if a person will allow, yeah, it can do amazing, amazing things. Um, as far as back to this ring, um, before the radionics convention, it was on the 30th of October. We started, I decided that I was going to make a new ring. And, um, so I called in a few people that I was working with, um, you know, including my sister and me and Heimdall, the, the guardian, third templates and talk. And we were, we basically just kind of like created this council and I twisted the ring or twisted the wire. We made the ring. And it was really interesting that very first time that I saw a ring when it was put together, it presented as like this jungle that was coming out of it. It was this jungle of all these different species and colors and forms of plants. And they were flowing out of the ring. Um, and this is when Brenda and I were looking at it. And it just, you know, and Brenda was like, holy crap, that's a little chaotic in there. <clears throat> so we did some some tempering with it, um, did just a little bit of work to harmonize things more in the authority templates inside the ring. And it was showing us this plant and a morphogenic field, that, that field of consciousness of the plant. And then it shows how there are patterns of energy. When consciousness intercepts energy, it creates patterns. These patterns come into physical reality. That is how physical reality is created is consciousness patterns of energy then it was showing us this plant and this plant inside of here it was just a single tall plant and it started to send roots down and pull up nutrients that were not there before um because like with radionics because it was showing us like when you broadcast for radionics because at our convention there was 85 people this year um most most of those folks are working in agriculture, commercial agriculture, organic, all of that. Um, and so they broadcast the plants a lot. And so that's one way that it was just simply showing us how a plant can then access nutrients that weren't there. So Brenda and I were like, huh, that's okay. That's interesting. And, um, you know, I was talking to, sorry, my phone was in silence there. Um, we were talking to a doctor that was there, Dr. Michelle, and she is, she works with, oh man, she's amazing. She works with rice and other plants and she, in her talk, she was talking about how the soil contains all nutrients. They're just not activated. There is an electromagnetic activation that occurs in the soil to actually create the nutrients to where they're accessible by the plant. And we were like, oh, wow, holy crap, okay. That's what we were seeing that was doing was that it allows the plant 
to then create its own little um, reality bubble, so to speak, within its root system to where it was creating the nutrients that it needed to be a beautiful, vibrant plant. Um, so, yeah, very, very interesting with that. Um, and then a question here. Does this work in a similar way as the chalice ring as far as letting more soul coming down into the body? Yeah, we will totally get to that question. Um, this does contain the energetics of the chalice and the divine I am, and all of that is in this new wisdom ring, which again, all this information on the wisdom ring is applicable to the wings of talk because this contains that same energetics plus the extra of, of talk and Heimdall. Um, Heimdall is our guardian of our templates. So with the wisdom ring, um, I was originally going to call it the energy repatterning ring because this is something that I've been working on in consciousness is that I've, I've always believed that we're going to be able to interface physical reality with consciousness and have instant creation, manifestation. Um, where when we manifest, you know, right now, you know, through human intent and then it comes down the pipeline and maybe, you know, you're wanting like a cup of tea. Somebody three days later, hey, I got an extra cup of tea. Would you like it? Yeah, thanks for the cup of tea. I'm talking about instant creation, about cup of tea, and there it is. Um, interfacing consciousness with physical reality. And this isn't too far off. I mean, this is the talk that I actually gave at the Radionics Convention in how we are already interfacing with physical reality and consciousness. And we are doing that, um, you know, the healing work, like when Brenda uses her conscious intent to move a rib back into place it moves back into place when you are broadcasting radionically to to help uh, clear a virus or to help a plant grow better you see the physical results in this world just like any kind of energy work that we do whether it's reiki um, doesn't matter we are actually shifting we are actually doing changes in physical reality um, through our conscious intent and so, you know, it's not too far off. But energy repatterning, um, because that has been a, a big thing that I've been seeing a lot recently is how consciousness creates those patterns of energy that then manifest as physical. And so I was originally going to call this the energy repatterning ring or the energy coding ring. But after we started working with it some more. So we worked with this over the course of three days. After we were working with this some more, we found that um, it was doing the work that we've also been doing that I, that I do when I um, have sessions with people is I'll walk you through of uh, bringing in that energy of the chalice into the body. The soul accesses it. We go back in time through humanity and we have the soul distill the light and information from lifetimes, the soul's lifetimes, and turn that experience into wisdom. And, you know, that's my theory is, is that as we bring in more of our soul's light, more of our wisdom, that's consciousness. Um, consciousness is the divine I am. I am. I exist. That's consciousness. Then we have the soul. And then we have all the incarnations. And so at some point in time, this was an epiphany that my buddy and I at the radionics convention had um, because my buddy, Marty Lucas, um, he's helped to create some of the rings before. He was the one who actually channeled in the, or doused in the galactic ascension ring. And then he helped us create the torsion ring, which we added into the harmony rings, which is simply creating a third field when you bring two rings together, it creates another field in between them. That was part of that torsion ring that Marty helped create. And then, of course, last year with the everything ring, I called in Marty's soul to assist on the creation of that. And this year, Marty had, um, he makes reagents for radionics. Basically, a reagent is simply, um, he takes these uh, glass cylinders. Oh, they're not glass. They're, well, they're silica. They're, they're, a, they're a manufactured quartz cylinder about yay so around these cylinders he imprints them with energies it's, it's kind of like making a tensor ring but he uses a, a crystal a 
a glass cylinder to hold that energy um, that he creates. And Marty created something called the DNA seed atom. When he used our ring that first night with his little crystal, his DNA seed atom, it was a holy wow epiphany moment for him. I mean, he doesn't cry and he was just bawling. I mean, he, he, um, he was taken back through, um, he called it the tree of life, that he saw that he is simply the tip of the root of this entire system of what his soul is. And he got to go through there. And I was sitting there witnessing this, that he went through all these lifetimes and just were changing lifetimes all the way along the root system, all the way up to the tree. And then when you get up to the tree, he talked about how it branches off. That's where we are all one consciousness, whatever. Um, but yeah, just a holy wow epiphany moment with that. And so I had, um, you know, I had Brenda look at this with me too, with his, um, with his work. And we put that work in here, that DNA seed atom. When we did, it shifted this ring to where if your soul had DNA, this would be repatterning the DNA of the soul. It is going back through everything that your soul is in this universe and repatterning the energy, distilling light and information from all experience, all lifetimes, turning it into wisdom. That's why we call it the wisdom ring. So Marty and I had this epiphany that we talked about that, um, we weren't meant to hold on to our experiences and our emotions and them become who we are. You know, I am my experience. I am my emotion. We feel we were designed soul level. We incarnate. We have experiences. Those experiences free flow to the soul as wisdom. That is the part of the expansion of consciousness. The expansion of creation is how I feel it. Please don't take any of this if it doesn't resonate. Um, and so we see that at some point in time, we started to hold on to those things instead of allowing that to be a free flow wisdom into the soul as we feel it was meant to be. We started to hold on to those things and we started to become our experience, our emotions. You know, and we find that very much in the work that I do with people over this past, you know, months is, is that it's talking them into allowing the soul to go through and it's using that chalice energy amongst others and it's allowing the soul to go through those lifetimes and distill that you know turn change that experience into wisdom so if there's a trauma here in a past life and that trauma comes up and it affects us usually in the physical sometimes the mental and emotional uh, well yeah, i guess it does affect mental and emotional too but as that trauma comes in and we note it usually in the physical, then when we go to clear that trauma, that physical issue, we find that it is that core of that trauma in another lifetime. Well, this energy allows the soul to go in and take that, turn that to wisdom, so then you no longer have that trauma. You have the wisdom of it. Um, and that's just, and it's huge. It, it's, it's huge. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see. Question from Donna. I've just recently heard that it's not good or healthy to wear copper jewelry on your body. Can you tell me your thoughts on this? Not sure if I should continue to wear or buy more copper jewelry. I'd be thankful for any information. So, you know, wearing copper jewelry on the body, there, I would say, 98.9% .9 of the population, if not more, it is beneficial to have copper on the body. What copper does, and, and this isn't, um, you know, don't think of some of the electroplating stuff that's full of other things. I'm talking about pure copper. That pure copper, when it is on your body, your skin is a smart organ. Your skin will absorb as much copper as your body needs. Usually when you are turning green from wearing pure copper, not the electroplated stuff or things that look like copper, um, you know, I'm talking pure copper and, and copper wire that we, you know, that we purchase from electrical warehouses 
are 99.7% pure copper. Um, and with the copper, um, if you turn green, it is usually stress or dehydration. The reason you turn green when you wear copper is because your skin says, nope, I'm not absorbing any more copper because our body cannot process that copper. But you become less hydrated or you become less stressed and more hydrated, then your body starts to absorb the copper for 98% of the people. There's very, very few people uh, that I've ever met, just a handful, that cannot touch copper because there's something in their body chemistry that just eats the copper, uh, the copper burns them, um, um, you know, and, and their chemistry just eats the copper away. Very, very few, just a tiny handful that I've ever seen like this or have ever heard of. But for the majority of us, no, your body needs copper. It is, it is, it is one of them, the, it, is, it is a part of our makeup, our physical makeup. And again, your skin knows best on what to absorb. Now, if you are taking copper orally, you know, like the Ayurvedics did it for thousands of years, or if you put a ring in your water, which we suggest not doing, you need to muscle test, ask your body, is it okay to ingest this copper orally today? Um, because your body knows. So again, it is completely safe to wear copper on your skin and it is beneficial for almost everybody um, to wear copper. Um, let's see. Um, and then eighth one was asking about um, using the wisdom ring with uh, some of the other tools like the, um, you know, so Ethan, I have not experimented much with the wisdom ring on some of the other tools, especially the everything ring, except my divine. I am activator pendant. This is the, this is the, um, wisdom ring that we're, that we have right now available. Well, actually the wisdom rings are only available to all of you guys here on the webinar. They're not going to go live, live until, um, Monday. But if you want to check out the wisdom rings, we don't have photos yet. We will over the weekend. The description is kind of, you know, the, the, the description's not really in order or beautiful. But those wisdom rings are available to purchase right now. Um, to find them on the website, just simply go to Twisted Sage on the store. And then when you're on the store in the search bar, just put in wisdom or wisdom ring, wisdom tensor ring, and these rings will come up. Um, so when I use this wisdom ring in place of, you know, the divine I am activator pendant, we put in another copper ring behind here, um, the divine I am, which was doing amazing things. Holy smokes, this wisdom ring in place of it, when I put it on, I, I kind of went out of body for a little bit. Um, pretty flipping amazing, these wisdom rings. Um, Let's see. Uh, and then Wolfgang's ask, uh, Wolf Eagle, hey, buddy, any chance of a lower price prototype subscription single small item purchase option? Um, you know, not really because um, for our subscription, prototype subscription service, you know, the $99 one, um, you don't get too much things in that package, um, you know, for the $99 one, just because, um, and we do with our prototypes, we do put them at a lower price than what our, um, than what our retail price would be, you know, for the subscription prices. And so if you end up making a purchase for the prototype subscription, you can, you know, put in the notes, some of the things that you would prefer. And we can't guarantee it, but I mean, we'll certainly do our best to help people with their preferences on what they receive. And then once you have purchased that prototype subscription, then you get access to that page where we have prototype tools on. And the prototype tools that we have are not, they're more of the higher end tools, to be honest. They're not anything that's small and cheap. They're, they're more of our 
of our more grandiose tools that we were playing with, um, you know, like the triangle wire, Gaia spheres, things like that. So, um, yeah, so we don't really make too many prototypes that are just small, um, inexpensive tools, you know, really. They're, they're more of the higher end ones on our prototypes. Uh, let's see. We have your healing wand. How can we best use it? Um, so each of the wands, it depends on which wand you have. Now, we have a, a webinar on each of the wands except for the quantum healer. But with the quantum healer, all of the wand webinars apply to the quantum healer because the quantum healer contains the, the fairy wand, the dragon wand, the golden fire and light wand, and the shaman's wand. So out of all of those wands, um, the quantum healer contains all of them. And to use how to to learn how to use any of the specific ones, please do check out the webinar that we have um, on each of those each of those wands. Uh, could you explain more if this new wisdom ring? Can you explain more if this new wisdom ring was, works with ailments and disease? Would this work more on people who are trying to work with diseases, or Taurus is still the best tool for diseases? Really depends on where you're at. Um, you know, the Tauruses are are something that, you know, gosh, like people with cancer usually resonate most with the Tauruses because the Tauruses are working in that emotional field. They're also creating uh, that field here in the physical to bring a coherence, a harmony back to the physical body. So a lot of people would put them on their physical body where their ailments are. Um, you know, so with our Tauruses, most people, most of us would sleep with them at night and we'd hold them on the body. Um, but the wisdom rings and the on the wings of talk are working in a little bit of a different way. They are, they're working a lot deeper. Um, they are doing that work of of everything in the emotional bodies and so much more so so much more they are allowing the repatterning so when we're working on a on an ailment let's say you know you have a shoulder out or something of that nature and you are using one of the wisdom rings with it or the wings or the new wings of talk and it's not the human-based intention of doing that healing work. It has to do with consciousness. It is your consciousness that drives this, that, um, that comes through and actually does the work. Us as the human, we have to surrender and allow. Um, what is consciousness and how do you utilize consciousness? That is simply being in the heart space, inviting in your soul's light more. The more of our soul that we can hold in the physical, the more conscious of a being we are. The more conscious of a being we are, the less we need any tools. I tell everybody, I don't even need my cell phone tab anymore. I have it just to show people. But... Just because I'm confident in where I'm at in my power, that I, you know, that I don't need that person, that specific tool anymore. Um, gosh, sorry, this is kind of um, an interweaving. So because it's one, it's really a new concept to me too of consciousness doing the work. So consciousness, when you are working with these rings. It's not your fears or your thoughts or your emotions that drives this. Unlike old creation, when we've created this entire world that we've created around us, we've created from here, fear, necessity, survival, programs, belief structures, outside influences, and you know, all kinds of things influence us when we are here. These rings bypass all of this. They are working with 
the true you. This is not the true you. The true you is your heart, your soul, and all that your soul is, your light body. Maybe we want to call it your light body. Um, but it is working with consciousness and not our conscious intent that we have as a human from the head. <clears throat> um, so working with um, the ailments and disease, it's, it's a lot of it's going to be dependent on person and where they're at and if they can allow, because a lot of people still need other tools um, that they can interface with, that the mind can interface with and things like that versus these newer tools that are, um, well, you know, and I don't feel that's true either in all actuality that I feel anybody can pick up this ring, this wisdom ring, and it's going to do beautiful, beautiful things for them. And it's going to start working with them whether they allow or not. It's not going to get deep, 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 maybe to the core or through all lifetimes in this universe thing right at the very instant that they pick it up. But it is going to start shedding away the layers of the onion and it's going to start doing it fast. So, yeah, the wisdom ring is truly for everybody, no matter where you're at on this ladder, on the rungs of the ladder. And this is going to be, I feel, kind of the precursor to where we're going is that we have one ring that you access, anybody access. As they access this ring, it takes them to whatever rung of the ladder it is that is the most beneficial for them. And so that way, you know, some people only resonate with like the harmony rings right now or just maybe the golden fire and they don't touch the chalice, things like that. My goal and intention is to eventually get it to where you step into this ring and it takes you wherever you need to be on this ladder and then it continually shifts you to whatever rung it is that is in your highest and best so my answer you know to this is that yes anybody can use this ring um, how does the one and a half inch wisdom ring work with the new infinite light pendant can we wear them together for more benefit you know, you really can, um, sorry, I was going to dig one of these rings out of my pocket here because I know I have one of the new wisdom rings here just so that I can actually compare it to the pendant I have on. I'll open this one. So this is the wisdom ring pendant. This is the alchemist set that I use. I use the Gaia sphere in the center. And so this wisdom ring is the same size as the center ring. Um, it's the same size as the chalice ring. And so you can certainly use this new wisdom ring pendant in place of the chalice ring on your alchemist pendant, or you can add it to the alchemist pendant. Um, when I just put this on here, yeah, I feel there's a lot more things going on than when it was just this. Um, but really have not, again, have not really worked a whole lot with, um, with these new rings and other rings. So we haven't done a lot of experimentation with them. <clears throat> um, let's see. So... Somebody was mentioning they were looking for the wisdom ring on the website. Let me can I start it. Oh, my fingers off. There we go. Let me look up the wisdom ring on Twisted Sage. So I'm going to go to Twisted Sage. And then I'll go to the shop. Now when I'm at the shop, I'm going to type in wisdom oh well if i spell wisdom right maybe wisdom okay so when i type in wisdom in my search bar up here it shows up right here as the wisdom ring and of course there's no photo or anything for it yet but yeah up here on your little um little eyeglass just type in wisdom 
Oh, and if you are here live, thank you. Somebody's put up the link right there for us. Um, so let's see. Uh, and let's see, Donna was asking, you said you do healing work. What are some of the things you've helped people with? You know, for me, it's, um, I don't do as much. Um, for me, the forte for physical healing is the the skeletal structure. I don't know. That's just always been kind of my thing that I can, can work on, that I can see and, and help assist in the old way of like, you know, moving bones around, things like that. But, um, you know, and again, that was the old way of doing things. So for the work that I do is... I work pe work with people more on the soul level of going through and clearing traumas, programs, beliefs, old contracts, um, entities. You know, I just do all of the basic clearing work is the work that I personally do um, because clearing has always been, you know, just the thing that I do is, is clearing. And of course, once you do the clearing, then your body is allowed to come in and do its own healing work. Where when you work with Brenda, she she works the body and she does all the clearing work at the same time um you know because brenda's forte is very much working with the physical and mental and emotional um let's see when you put your wisdom ring on your pendant i felt its energy taken out easily in the geosphere field it feels very vast and multicolored even colors we can't see in this reality that's pretty fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I tell you, um, yeah, this wisdom ring, there's something, something with this. Um, let's see, another question. Can you wear this one half inch wisdom ring with the infinite light pendant? Yes, it's, it's basically the same size as the infinite light pendant, but you can put them together on the lanyard. Um, and it is going to amplify anything that you put with it. Um, gosh, there was a bunch more at the wisdom ring and, and the whole concept that, um, is just kind of eluding me right now, but we'll have a lot more written on it on the website. As you see right now, it's a little discombobulated because I'm still, you know, still working on the information and organizing everything there. So it's just kind of like my scratch pad right now, but we wanted to be able to at least make it available to you right now. If you if you are interested in those wisdom rings, um, and again we'll have it by Monday. Everything <clears throat> everything will be pretty on the website and um, for the wisdom ring page. But yeah, it's um, so one of the things that we we're seeing too is okay. One of the original things that we saw was that if we have something going on like. Um, I was doing, you know, I was letting some people play with me at, at a convention and um, some people said, hey, you have something going on with such and such. I was like, eh, no, I don't, you know, that's I'm not mine. And I ended up taking that, that pain on. And I was like, holy crap, this is not mine. That was a projection that somebody sent to me of, hey, you got such and such pain. And, you know, and I ended up taking it on. I was like, oh, crap, I got this pain. It's kind of like what doctors do to you. When you go in and you get a diagnosis from the medical, you know, in the medical field, if you totally believe in that diagnosis, then you're going to help create that. And so somehow I believed in this pain and it created and manifested and I could not let it go. I knew it wasn't mine, but I couldn't let it go. And then when I got home and I was working with Brenda on the ring, she's like, oh, try this. And so, you know, they were showing her put my attention onto the pain and then put my attention onto the ring at the same time. And it disappeared. I mean, I had tried to clear this and it just, it disappeared. So it's, it's divine attention. And that's the work that Brenda does anymore too, is that she doesn't go in and work at something, she puts her attention of her divine, of her consciousness onto what it is, and then it just unworks itself. It repatterns the energy of that creation. That's what this ring does. 
is when you put your divine attention onto something and your divine attention, this helps to bring that through. And then when you put that attention onto something, it repatterns it energetically. Um, quite the new concept of, of doing the work. It really is. But um, anyway, uh, oh yeah, somebody's mentioning about Tom Kenyon in here and um, listening to Tom Kenyon stuff about how it does healing and clearing codes. Yeah, Tom Kenyon is a phenomenal being. I actually have some of his books up here on my bookshelf that really influenced me in my in my beginning stages of of stepping into this whole thing is is Tom Kenyon, and uh, he has some beautiful work for sure. All right, everybody, um, thank you for being here today, and I'm gonna run unless anybody has a last minute question here, but. Um, yeah, it's it's a whole new paradigm that we're stepping into. Oh, yeah, one more quick thing. So we see that there's another thing going on in humanity on the planet right now. Um, you know, I don't know if you'd go so far as to say it's an imbalance of the mind, but it kind of is because we are shifting on the physical and that was an interesting thing, too, that this Dr. Michelle brought up in our radionics convention. It was that she uses microscopes and has slides of blood. And some of these bloods, some of these slides that she's taken blood samples from that she looks at in the microscope that she showed us during the convention are like three or four months old. And they're still moving around. They are viable, beautiful structures of blood. But they are making geometries. She is showing also in rice how rice that she's worked with is starting to emit light and that is becoming more crystalline in physical structure we've always said that that we are changing into crystal light bodies holy shift are we ever um you get a high power microscope she said two or three hundred bucks and you can see this in blood and then i've heard other people talk about that you know, those in the medical field and scientific field don't really see it because nobody uses microscopes anymore. But yet you can see where blood stays alive for three to four months on a slide in just a regular room and because of the quantum entanglement. But then also that it's physically restructuring. So as our bodies are physically restructuring, because we've all said this and we all know that we go through these things when you get a cold virus, things like that, it's working with your physical structure, your DNA of your body, and you are restructuring your body to hold more of your light. But one part of this whole shift of humanity, of the human, is also the mind, that we are stepping out of intelligence. Um, if you notice... So many people talk about not being able to remember things, a certain word, a person's name, all this stuff. I mean, God, our mom always thought, you know, she's like, God, am I having pre-Alzheimer's stuff going on? And, you know, and we're like, no, we're, we're just, everything is, we're, we're letting go of so much. And the human mind is also shifting and changing. Because, again, it was at some point in humanity, and we can actually trace it back to Atlantis wearing the crystal headbands, that um, it could because prior to that, as we were souls incarnate, and as we incarnate into this third density physical reality plane, it was tough for us to stay here in incarnation to have these experiences. So, like with the Lemurians, they would always pop out. They could never stay incarnate for long. Um, Lemuria, uh, then the Atlanteans, when we were working with the biological of the human in Atlantis. Um, and we were trying to um, make everything, you know, harmonized all, you know, kind of like, you know, harmonized in human into same size, shape, figure, all that stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, forget about any of that. But um, when we were working in Atlantis and we were working at consciousness coming into the physical body and trying to stay here more and be conscious creators grounded into this third density physical reality we had crystal headbands that brought us more in um you know your pineal is that that antenna um we became stuck and we, we totally feel like the time that we started to 
become our emotions and our experiences was in the time of Atlantis um, before the downfall and that we we were stuck there and that we carried this this through all these lifetimes and so um god i forget the point where i was even going sorry you guys but um this oh yeah with the mind so we are shifting our mind again we are stepping out of this whole thing that our mind creates our reality and it has you know the intelligence because we are bringing in the wisdom of the soul you guys we are bringing in the soul's wisdom into the heart and you just know you know things you don't intellectualize about them this was not this is not meant to be wisdom is what we are moving to and so the imbalance of the brain and this is just my theory just you know again take what resonates and just leave the rest please um but my theory is is that we are changing the brain too on how we process everything and how we become more of our wisdom and so the ring this ring um brendan and i did some work with that whole concept and it was pretty flipping amazing um it was intense because just the whole process of, of putting that energetics into the ring and um it's in there now so it's not like this is going to fix an imbalance in the mental because the imbalance in the mental is needed right now we need to it's a part of the transition from going from where we're at right now as the human species to stepping into wisdom the true wisdom we are restructuring the mind as well as the physical body and as we are doing that, we're doing all that rewiring, that repatterning, the re the restructuring. It is causing that what appears to be the imbalance in the mind. And you can see it. Everybody's gone flipping crazy in the world. But it's okay. It truly is okay because it is a part of that shifting process. Now, what we're seeing with the ring is that it is simply helping to shift through there with more grace, ease, and quickness. So, yes, we're going to make tensor field generators out of these. And that's what I would like to do. And start broadcasting these all over the place. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful transformational time. And it truly is. It's not just words. We are seeing it on the physical. We're seeing it in the mind. And we're seeing it in the way that we operate and do things. In the way that we can create miracles all around us and we can shift this planet and ourselves first ourselves first so all my healthy wealthy wise friends uh, love you guys very much thank you for the support and we will see you next week all right take care